it's always a dramatic start here because you accelerate away for the fourth race of the season and then immediately have to hit the brakes hard. And this is where the tyres are cold and the brakes are cold. And is everybody going to be given sufficient room to get through La Source on this opening stanza? Down towards Eau Rouge for the first time. The GTs just need to get through in a neat and tidy fashion. And you can hold your breath and say, we've had a clean start up until now which uh, from the whole of the rest of the shenanigans this weekend is a bit of a surprise, but uh, maybe everyone has been read the riot act a little bit in the driver's briefing and needing to behave because it's a long, long race. More tussling here, 22 and 9. United Autosports and the Ireland by Proton Cars. Two by two coming out of Bruxelles corner. Great move there from Julian Gerby around the outside of the 88 car in his number eight. And that uh, takes him up into fourth place in this LMP3 battle. Next target is going to be Michael Jensen. And now it's a battle for second. The number eight car of Julian Gerby looking to make uh, progress, but he's in a tussle not just with the 17 car. He was eager to get by, but needed to take to the escape road to do that. It was a touch with the Vector Sport car and the Algarve Pro car, and yet John's been in the wall heavily. And what happened to the Algarve Pro car after this? I think Vector got away with it. That was Ryan Cullen, but driving the Sky Blue car, John Hartson is able to get out of the car and walk away. Slightly gingerly. Well, but, you but can understand that. You know what? So that is the car that started second in LMP3. Uh, we've seen some absolutely whopping accidents similar to that if the car goes further to its right and slams into the tyre wall. It's three car train, the double toe here for Matt Griffin. They've got a fan out now. He goes to the left, now he goes to the right. He's going to plug that gap that Sarah Bovey has inadvertently created, but she sticks to the inside oh, she's line. Oh, there's a hit. Oh, there's a big hit. And where's Lawson going? Is he going to be involved as well? He's gone totally left to try and avoid spinning Matt Griffin and Sarah Bovey. They're Lawson's caught in They're as well. They're all three well. off. He's now being investigated for something. So Matt's staying aboard the car as the guys look and see whether or not this is something they can fix quickly. Oh, there's a spin further back on the restart. Was that a P2 car? I think it P2. was. Yeah. It's the Duquesne okay. car, number 30, that is stranded in the middle of the road. And that is John Baptiste Simenauer, who either got hit or tried to give it too much right foot on coolish tyres. Or has, has that changed as well? So I didn't see what happened there with Hiroshi Yamaguchi, but he was leaving La Source very slowly indeed. He's had a moment, I think, under braking. And there's trouble there for the 22. And this is what happened to Sarah Bovey. Oh dear, oh, dear me. She's out now. She's out of the race now. That's totally broken the steering. And Hiroshi Hamaguchi's probably out as well. He was in trouble. The 12 <laughs> WTM car is the one that's clashed with Matthew Bell. I don't know whether we ever said that, but uh, Wokenspiegel, Team Monschau, Rinaldi car, and the 11. We've got that as well. And Lawson spinning round and round, and I think this hit into the tie wall is going to be, well, not too bad. The more substantial contact onto the Kemmel straight they go, and uh, certainly defending initially is Philly Bubegrand, and he puts the car in the middle of the road. Is it going to be around the outside from the Polish driver? That is absolutely terrific from Robert Kubica to take the race lead. He kept the car totally within the confines of the circuit, with uh, the, after the Kemmel, rather, with uh, Ugran behind or rather in front of Lomko, I'll get it right in a minute, around the outside will go Vlad Lomko to take the position away from Philippe Ugran. So Ugran led a couple of laps ago. Difficult for Ugran this because he's got the zebra liveried Ferrari ahead of him, which is the, eight, the 51 of Manu Collard. Very rapid indeed, of course, in the GT ranks. But ooh, around the outside, Degueras on Great Ugran. Moves. Yeah, that was all getting a bit too close for comfort but purely because they're having to work their way through slower lmgt3 cars that are not hanging around rest assured but they're never going to be as quick as a p2 he's going he wants to be part of this and he's he's the quicker of the three at the moment partly because these two have been bottled up in amongst gt uh, traffic there. 
And that was Ugran to the side of Richard de Guerres. De Guerres says, well, I've got to go over to this part of the circuit because I was put there. And Stefan Raquel May will swallow up uh, Philippe Ugran in one fell swoop. And maybe de Guerres as well. And de Guerres thought about turning in and had to redress his line as quickly as possible. So there may have been a slight pause in an otherwise seamless stop. Purple and dark blue car rejoined. Esteban Masson now, though, is a lot distant, not more distant from Johnny Adam. So these LMP2 cars perhaps all crowding the GT3, the LMGT3 cars, has rather separated their fight. Sonny Caldwell. Fighting with, on the outside, Andy Merrick. Uh, not too far away. No, well, Fabio sorry, Shearer's that's, that's actually the, that's in the, the pit other lane. One, that's Bradley. It's the 20 car. My apologies. It is the battle for the two Aston Martins and Adam GT3 at the moment. This is the battle for fifth, but that will wind back to be close to the lead battle. Sort of podium positions. And Lorcan Hannafin goes by Casper Stevenson. This time, weaving around Capietto, trying to fend off Drogovic. He's going to go on the outside. He's done it. But Jot van Outer didn't make the corner at all. He wasn't overtake. He wasn't attempting an overtake but found himself on the runoff at Le Com. This is the battle between Jov van Utert. He pulls the dummy on Felipe Drugovic. He's going to make that move into and through the bus stop. Neatly done there by the Dutchman. This is the Brazilian. Trouble, though, for Julian Anlauer. He's pushed That's too hard. Perhaps. I'm, I'm rather speculating Le there. Looked like but a left puncture. Jot van Aert is going to try it first of all, and Jakobsen just cannot nothing, uh, slow him down. He can't do there. anything about that. And or, 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 apart from Jot van Aert, maybe running a bit too deep. And here is Xiaomi Lacy to also swallow up the very talented Jakobsen. But in this phase of the race, nothing up his sleeve at all. No. Jot van Aert this time into La Source, but it's probably going to be better to get a good exit out of this corner and make sure, oh no, I was going to say do it on the Kemmel straight, but he won't need to because Jot van Aert just couldn't really turn in. So there's a sniff up the outside of the Aston Martin. This is going to be a drag race down the start-finish uh, 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 straight. Veroni needed to know the Ferrari's dimensions there because there was about a cigarette paper between the front of the Ferrari and the rear wing of the Aston Martin. Around the outside will go Verone. Valentin Hasclo, it's a drag race, but the Ferrari's going to win it. it. He's ahead of the Aston Martin into third position. An awesome overtake. Here and comes Jakobsen. Jakobsen, who are going to overlap and change position. But if these guys are struggling with their cars, then there's nothing to stop Louis Delatraz and Tom Dillman to potentially hit issues well. this late on in the race as well. Johnny kept his patience. He handed over to Robert Kubica, and Louis Delatraz has brought it home for the AO by TF Outfit's first victory of the season in the European Le Mans series. It feels like it's been a very long time coming, but truly well-deserved. Will be your international here crossing the line with Adam Ali. Matthew Richard Bell, that duo will take LMP3. <laughs> LMP2 Pro Am, AF Corsa. Mathieu Vazivier brings the car home. It will be Kessel Racing for Daniel Serra to complete the run along with Esteban Massan, who did the lion's share of the middle chunk of the race actually. Loads more to come from the ELMS. We sign off from Belgium. Bye-bye.